Imagine looking up at the night sky and the moon, you know, usually the familiar white or yellow, suddenly it's glowing this deep, almost eerie blood red. That's not science fiction. That's something many of us might actually see very soon. Okay. We're talking about a really spectacular event, a total lunar eclipse of what people often call a blood moon. It's happening September 7th to 8th, 2025. And uh, that's not all. It kind of kicks off a whole season of celestial events. There's a partial solar eclipse later that month, too. So today we're diving deep. We've looked at the astronomical data, the science. We want to give you a shortcut to understanding these amazing sites. And what's really interesting here is that these aren't just random, isolated things happening. Our mission today, really, is to explore the mechanics. You know, what's going on behind the scenes? Understand why the moon turns red. That's a big question. And show how these events, which might seem almost magical, are actually incredibly predictable. We're basing this on solid sources like data from timeanddate.com, NASA studies, incredible stuff. So you get the real picture of this uh, cosmic dance. You'll see the precision involved. Okay, let's focus on the main event first. That's September 2025 blood moon. So yeah, pencil it in. September 7th, going into the early hours of September 8th, 2025. And it's crucial to get this. It's a total lunar eclipse. That's what gives it the blood moon name. Though, interestingly, for the real sky watchers out there, a partial lunar eclipse will be happening at the same time as the moon sort of eases into Earth's shadow first, mm. like a little warm-up act before the main show. Mm. But here's what makes it really exciting for everyone listening. This isn't just a local show. The visibility. It's huge. We're talking oh. Europe, Asia, Australia, Africa, and the Americas. Just think, wherever you are, there's a really good chance you'll be able to see this. It's genuinely global. And timeandaid.com confirms that widespread visibility for 2025, a real chance to connect, you know, planet-wide. Right. And just to give some context, a total lunar eclipse happens when Earth lines up perfectly, smack dab between the moon and the sun. So our planet casts this big shadow, the umbra, and the moon travels right into it. It's like Earth just photobombs the sun's light heading to the moon. Okay, so if Earth is blocking the light, shouldn't the moon just, like, vanish go completely dark. That seems logical, that right? That's the logical thought, yeah. yeah. But that's what's so cool. It doesn't just disappear. Instead, it takes on this uh, this amazing reddish color. Sometimes it's faint, sometimes really deep, and that's where the really interesting science comes in. Why red? Exactly. That's the big question, isn't it? The color, sure. it's called a blood moon for a reason, and yeah, it's catchy. It probably goes way back. But there's real science behind that specific color, right? It's not just like atmospheric haze. Not just haze, no. It prompts the question, why red? And the answer is actually linked to our own planet. It's because Earth's atmosphere filters the sunlight that passes through it. The key phenomenon is called Rayleigh scattering. And that might sound familiar because it's exactly the same reason our sky looks blue during the day. And why sunsets and sunrises blaze with red and orange. Ah, okay. So it's the same principle, just applied differently. Precisely. Sunlight, you know, is made of all colors, different wavelengths. Shorter waves, blue and violet, bump into air molecules and scatter all over the place. That's the blue sky we see. Longer waves, like red and orange, they're less easily scattered. They tend to travel straighter. So blue light gets bounced away? Pretty much. Now, during a lunar eclipse, the sunlight that reaches the moon has to skim through Earth's atmosphere first. Our atmosphere acts like a filter. It scatters away most of that blue light. But the longer red wavelengths... They bend or refract around the edge of the Earth and continue on towards the moon, lighting it up with that filtered reddish glow. So the amount of dust or pollution in the atmosphere could change the color then? Absolutely. That's a key point. NASA studies have actually shown this. More particles in the atmosphere, say, from a big volcanic eruption or lots of dust, maybe even pollution, that can scatter the blue light even more effectively. Which means the light reaching the moon is even redder, sometimes a really deep coppery red, so the intensity of the red. It's like a snapshot of what's going on in Earth's atmosphere at that moment. Wow. So the moon becomes like a projection screen for Earth's atmospheric conditions. That's fascinating. Could it ever get so dusty that the moon looks almost black? Yes, it can. Astronomers actually use something called the Danjon scale to rate the brightness and color. It goes from zero, which is very dark, almost invisible, all the way to four, which is a bright coppery red or orange. After major volcanic eruptions like Pinatubo back in 91, eclipses have been recorded as very dark, maybe a Danjon 0 or 1. The moon was barely visible. It really depends on how clear or dirty our atmospheric lenses at the time. That really changes how you think about it. It's not just a static event. 
And you mentioned ancient cultures. I bet they had some wild interpretations before we understood Rayleigh scattering. Oh, absolutely. Imagine seeing the moon turn blood red without any scientific explanation. It must have been terrifying or deeply significant. Many cultures saw it as a bad omen, you know? Divine anger, celestial monsters. The Incas thought a jaguar spirit was attacking the moon, causing it to bleed. They'd make noise to scare it off. Mesopotamians had complex rituals to protect their king during eclipses. Knowing the science now, it doesn't lessen the awe, I think. It just shifts it from fear to uh, appreciation for the physics. Yeah, transforms superstition into observable science. That's brilliant. But, okay, you said this blood moon isn't alone. It's part of a bigger picture. Right. There's more going on. Because just a couple of weeks later, on September 21st, 2025, there's another event. A partial solar eclipse this time. So, yeah, September is shaping up to be quite the month, celestially speaking. Exactly. And the fact that these two happen so close together, the total lunar and the partial solar eclipse, <laughs> that's not a coincidence. It tells astronomers we're in what's called an eclipse season. These seasons happen roughly every six months. An eclipse season. Okay, okay. what causes that? It all comes down to alignment and something called the lunar nodes. See, the moon's orbit around Earth is slightly tilted compared to Earth's orbit around the sun. About five degrees. So the moon usually passes a little above or a little below Earth's shadow, or Earth passes above or below the moon's shadow. But there are two points where the moon's orbital path crosses Earth's orbital plane. Those are the lunar nodes. Ah, okay. Like intersections on orbital highways. That's a perfect way to think about it. Eclipses can only happen when the sun, earth, and moon are all aligned, and the moon is at or very near one of these nodes, these intersection points. When everything lines up perfectly near a node during a full moon, you get a lunar eclipse. When they line up near a node during a new moon, you get a solar eclipse. So an eclipse season is the period when the sun is close to aligning with these nodes from Earth's perspective. That's why you often get solar and lunar eclipses clustered together, usually about two weeks apart. So it's all about the timing of crossing those intersections. Precisely. It shows these aren't random events at all. They're part of this incredibly predictable cosmic clockwork. Based on orbital mechanics, gravity, geometry, we can calculate these things centuries in advance with amazing accuracy. It really challenges that old idea of eclipses as just, you know, mysterious happenings. They feel rare, sure, but they're part of a grand repeating pattern. That predictability is kind of mind-blowing. Has astronomy ever been, like, truly surprised? by an eclipse showing up unexpectedly or not showing up when predicted, given how precise the models are? That's a good question. And honestly, no, not in modern astronomy. Our understanding of orbital mechanics based on Newton's and Kepler's laws and refined by Einstein, it's incredibly robust. We can predict the occurrence, timing, and location of eclipses with near certainty. What can vary, as we discussed, are the visual details like the exact shade of red of a blood moon due to unexpected atmospheric changes, or maybe fine details in the sun's corona during a solar eclipse. But the fundamental event, when and where, that's locked in. That reliability is actually crucial for science. Eclipses have helped verify relativity, study Earth's rotation, even date historical events. Okay, so bring this all back. Yeah. Why should someone listening care about lunar nodes and Rayleigh scattering? Besides it being cool science, of course. Well, beyond the coolness factor. Which is high. But yeah, what's the takeaway for, you know, you watching this guy? It means you get this amazing chance to see fundamental science happening live. It's not just equations in a book. It's right there. You can look up, see that red moon, and know why it's red. Yep. You can understand the alignment. It connects you directly to these vast cosmic processes in a really yep. tangible way. Exactly. And I think understanding the why deepens the appreciation. It moves beyond just... Wow, pretty red moon to, wow, look at the physics of light and orbits in action. Huh. It reveals the underlying order in the universe. These dramatic, almost mystical seeming events follow elegant, predictable rules. The fantastic mix of visual wonder and uh, scientific satisfaction. It reminds us we're a part of this huge interconnected system. Even tiny dust particles in our air influence what we see on the moon. So there you have it. Our deep dive into the September 2025 eclipse season. We've gone from that stunning red blood moon, colored by the same physics that makes our sky blue, to the precise orbital mechanics, the lunar nodes, that link lunar and solar eclipses together in these active seasons. We've covered the what, the when, and really dug into the why. So hopefully, if you're in one of those lucky spots, Europe, Asia, Australia, Africa, the Americas, when you look up on September 7th, 8th for the total lunar eclipse, and then again on September 21st for the partial solar eclipse, You'll see it with fresh eyes, with a new layer of understanding. It might just change how you see the night sky. And maybe leave you with this thought to chew on. 
If something that looks as wild and maybe even a bit magical as a blood moon turns out to be governed by such predictable, understandable science, what other things in the world around us, or maybe even within us, that seem random or chaotic? Might they also be following deeper hidden patterns that we just haven't fully grasped yet? It kind of encourages you to stay curious, doesn't it? Keep observing, keep questioning, because understanding really does change how we perceive everything.